my name is Devin, and today we will be walking through the onboarding flow for clinics. First things first, we'll need to navigate to the sign-in page. So I have a modern web browser open here. For, for my purposes here, I'm just using Google. And we're going to go up to the address bar, and we're going to type in my, M-Y, dot gluco, G-L-O-O-K-O, -O -O dot com. Once you have that typed in, you'll want to hit the return key. You'll see that'll take you to a blue sign-in page. From here, you just want to go ahead and enter your login credentials. So that would be your full email address and whatever your password is. And then once you're done with that, you'll want to click the sign in option here. All right, great job. You have now signed into Gluco. And you'll see there's a bunch of things available here. One of the most important things is the Gluco Pro Connect code. That's the code that connects a, a patient account to your provider account. It's generally all lowercase, all one word. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, but if you just give them this small code here, a patient can connect to your provider account. Okay, one of the most commonly used features of the population tracker is the View Patients um, tab at the top. You'll see that there's also an Assign Devices here, but for our purposes right now, we'll want to click on View Patients. And really what this does is it gives you a list of all the patients that have uploaded some sort of device in your clinic or that you're preparing to upload a device for. Some features of the View Patients tab is you can search for patient up in this field here. Let's say I want to search for Laura. And you'll see right there, there is one Laura in your po patient population. And it pulls up right here, at which point you could click on this and find out more about her. Even click into her profile if you wanted to learn more about her device details. Another feature of the population tracker is you can sort. So you can sort by the last sync date. You can sort by the average. You can even sort by average of the CGM. And all you would have to do to sort this is to click on one of these. Let's say we wanted to sort by average. We would just click on this. And it's going to tell us, oh, okay, well, this person has the highest average BG. Let's say we wanted to find the most recent uploads. We could similarly, we could go to this last sync field and click on that. And we'll see that there was a meter uploaded yesterday. If you see a blue phone icon to the left of a patient, for instance, right here, it would indicate that there has been remote data that's been uploaded to this patient's account. That can ap either happen through a patient manually uploading a device or even through one of our APIs, like if a Dexcom account is connected and that data has been pulled into the patient account for you. If you want to drill into the details of a patient account, you simply click on the patient and you'll now see that you are clicked into this patient account and can navigate the various options within this patient profile. If you ever need to update any patient details like date of birth, their first and last name, or even add an email address, you would always do that from the profile option up here in the upper left hand corner. You simply click on that. Similarly, if you ever want to access the patient profile or the patient settings um, from the patient list itself, you can just simply right click on the patient and go to patient settings. From the patient profile, you can edit the name, date of birth, type of diabetes, gender, height, weight, and you can modify a medical record number or add one. To make the changes stick, you'll just push the save button over here. If we scroll down here to the account section, you'll see we have the option to add an email address. Once we add an email address, it actually gives us the ability to send an invite to the patient. So if we were to add an email here, valid email, then it uh, an invite would be sent to the patient. If we scroll down to the data settings section here, it gives us the option to change the meter unit type. We can choose to include uh, pump BG entries in these statistics. Uh, we can also modify the target BG ranges. So we can adjust the lower limit, the before meal upper limit, and the after meal upper limit. Scrolling down to population flag settings, this section allows us to indicate when we show certain markers on a patient account. So for instance, for this patient, if 25% of the readings are above 250, we're gonna show this flag. Similarly, if 10% of the readings are below 70, we're going to show this flag. Additionally, we also have the option to flag if certain values are higher or lower than a certain value, and this is all changeable. 
let's say you wanted to change this value to 45 instead. You could simply type that in. Make sure you push the Save button to save it at the end. Moving down to daily time ranges gives us the option to adjust when a patient's morning, afternoon, evening, and night are represented. So if we wanted to change the morning time period, we would just click on this arrow and uh, we could uh, change that accordingly. As always, make sure you push the Save button before you finish. Okay, now that we've gone over this section, what I would like to do is go over some of the reports and graphs that are available to you. So if you go into a patient account, the first thing you'll see is you are placed on the summary tab. And basically the summary gives you some basic statistics and data. Um, scrolling down, there, there's a lot of options. You can sort by time of day, day of week. Similarly, if you want to see more of a running tally of blood glucose values or foods that have been added, those are available to you in the history section in the lower right hand corner. One of the other very important sections would be the logbook. From the logbook, which is generally the place where you can see PDM data most clearly, um, you will see that it is kind of in a graphical view and it gives you day by day of, of basal, bolus, carbs, and blood glucose values. Um, if you have any questions about the icons within the graph, I highly recommend you scroll down to the legend at the bottom. It's going to tell you what the icon for temp basal rate is, for instance, or when there was a suspend on an account. Another useful view that we have available on Gluco is this graphs section. So if we click into that, you'll see that it gives us more of a graphical rep representation of the information. You'll find a lot of the continuous glucose monitors, the CGMs of the world displayed here, and it gives us a, a better indication of long-term trends and, and data over time. Within the graphs section, there are a few subsections here, overview, overlay, and calendar, each of which give you a different representation of the data. Moving to the graphs calendar view, consolidates all data from all the sources that have been uploaded to the patient account. So BG values, pump values, CGM values, they'd all be represented here. Glucose, carbs, bolus, and basal rate display as stack graphs that allow for comparison of various data points. Once again, there is a very helpful legend at the bottom that can help you out if you have any questions. Clicking on any one section in the calendar view will actually take you to an overview of that day. This can be a great view to compare glucose, carbs, bolus, basal, and exercise data all in one easy place. Hovering over any one data point in the graph will display more information. For instance, here's a 93 blood glucose value. Insights is a place where we can view trends in common pump events, like site changes, and temp basal. And last but not least, another handy feature is this devices section. Devices allows you to kind of understand what devices have been uploaded to a patient account. So for this specific patient, you'll see there's been an Omnipod, a Simutron 600, and a Dexcom. And it also gives you data about the serial number of the device, if the time is accurate or not at the time of the upload, and even the last sync time. It's a great way to, way to see if a patient has actually successfully uploaded their device recently. Okay, and now that we have all this great information all in one place, what do we do next with it? One of the really great features about Gluco is it allows you to easily share data with really anyone. To create a report, you'll click on the Create PDF Report option here in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see it displays a, a pop-up that allows you to make additional selections. Some options you can choose are the time frame. You can choose which reports you want to include. Let's say, let's say we want to include the summary and devices and maybe the logbook. And how about for the summary, instead of displaying BG, we just want CGM data. Let's go ahead and take that off of there. To complete the process, you can go ahead and click on the Create PDF option here. One great feature of this Create PDF option is you can save your favorite profiles. M moving down to the Save Selection as Favorite Profile option allows you to save it as a name. Let's call it My Fave One. Pushing OK will save this as My Favorite Profile. 
you'll see that this profile is now saved up in my preferred PDF settings option here. If we ever needed to select these options again, just use it from the dropdown. Should you need to adjust your favorite profiles, you can always go to this Manage Favorites section. From here, you are allowed to create a new favorite, remove them, edit them, whatever you'd like. Great, so we've explored some of the graphs and features that Gluco makes available. Let's go find out what this Assign Devices tab is all about. Assign Devices is always kind of nested right next to View Patients here, so we will want to click on Assign Devices. You may want to make a note. The Assign Devices tab really only shows data from the Gluco Uploader Software option or from the Gluco Transmitter Hardware, which is a little white box. Looking at the Assigned Devices tab more closely, we'll see that it breaks it down by unassigned devices and recently assigned devices. For instance, there has been a Bayer Contour op uploaded recently and it currently hasn't been assigned. So next step would be to assign it. If there is an unassigned device, you have the option to assign to a patient. Sometimes the system may already know who that patient might be from a past assignment. Um, for instance, in this case, it's George. Um, alternatively, if it isn't George, you can always assign to another patient. Clicking on the assign to other a patient will give us some options. We'll have a first name, last name, date of birth, and a medical record number. If we were to fill these out and say continue, you would see this record then move to recently assigned. If we were to find that patient we just created in view patients, that data from this Bayer contour would now be assigned to that patient. Clicking on the option in the upper right hand corner, there is a settings option you can go to. Going to settings will allow you to make changes to your profile. From my profile, I could change my designation, my first and my last name. I could even modify my login email address or change my password. Scrolling down further, there is some information displayed in the site profile, another place where you can find your ProConnect code or the name of your account. Going down further, we have data settings. And much like earlier when we were looking at modifying a patient's specific flags or data settings, you can do this for your entire population. So for instance, if we wanted to set a value of 500 as a high for our entire population, we can do it from here. Don't forget to push save. Scrolling down to terminal settings allows us to make changes to the terminals we have associated with our account. What we consider terminals are the transmitters or the Gluco uploader software that resides on your computer. For instance, right here, this serial number is tied to Jill's transmitter. If we wanted to modify the name, we could do so here. Scrolling down here, you'll see that there are clinic uploader terminals. And we could also modify the name here if we needed to. Finally, scrolling down, we have our favorite PDF settings. This section allows us to modify our favorite PDF reports that we have saved over time. We could add a new favorite, we could edit one, or we could remove one. Well, that concludes the contents of this video. On behalf of the entire Gluco team, I wish you happy uploading.